Good morning and welcome to River City. My name is Linus and I'm going to take a few minutes to guide you through some announcements and let you know on everything that's going on right here at River City. If this is your first time worshiping at River City, welcome. We would love to get to know you better and we have some connection cards. If you feel comfortable filling them out, you can bring them back over at the information hub. I would love to meet you. Today is Grow Track Sunday, and if you're new to River City, this is just for you. Out in the hub following service, you can find and learn about River City. We can learn about you, and you can get plugged in and get moving forward. Don't miss it. This Wednesday is First Wednesday Worship, and this event is for the entire family. Make sure you don't miss it at 7 p.m. at the River City campus. Worship and communion, and there will be childcare for kids four years and younger. Make sure you don't miss it. All right, River City, let's talk about Christmas time. On Sunday, December 18th, there will be a wonderful drama put on. It's gonna be during normal service hours. And make sure you invite your family and your friends. And also remember, Christmas falls on a Sunday this year. So River City is going to be having a Christmas Eve service at 5 p.m. for one hour. There will be hot chocolate. And make sure you invite your family and your friends to the service as there will be no service on Christmas Day that Sunday. Thank you for coming out to River City and choosing to worship with us today. We are so thankful. And remember that you can stay connected with us on social media throughout the week. And also remember that you can come and find me at the Information Hub after the service today. I would love to meet you. Now let's stand to our feet and let's welcome Pastor. We're used to, to it happening and, and, and it, there was a, a bit of a breakdown right there. There is no first Wednesday this month. Uh, and the reason why we're giving a lot of our teams a break through Christmas. We served this past week, uh, though it's usually on first Wednesdays, but the fifth Wednesday we served with Shepherd's Heart this week. Served, I, I mean, dude, there were, at first it looked slow, and then we started realizing that people are getting two and three loads per car. So we're realizing that now, now listen to this for a second, generosity is contagious. Y'all know that? Generosity is contagious. What has started happening is people who usually come through the lines have started telling their friends about it. Their friends who are in need, and they're loading them, elders and people like that, loading them in the car and bringing them. Come on, see, when you live your life on mission, it quickens others to do something. Come on, we're on a mission. We are on a mission to steal from the Blues Brothers. We are on a mission from God. Come on, man. And what you do matters. You'll start affecting, you'll start affect, it'll, it'll start getting contagious. It starts affecting other people, generosity. And on the first week of this series, we talked about generosity. We talked about, talked about being Christ-like. What does Christian mean? It means Christ-like. And, and we're generous because he's generous. That's why. And I can't, I can't, be, I can't call myself a Christian if, I, if I'm not a generous person. It's through generosity that we even have salvation. Think about that for a minute. It's through love and generosity. And the second week, we talked a little bit. We got into uh, the heart of things. And today, I, if you'll notice, all through this series, I keep going back to the heart. Everybody say, my heart. Come on, I want my heart to be Christ. I want, I want to be like Jesus. I want my heart. I pray this prayer sometimes. God, break my heart for the things that break your heart. God, let, let me be, let me be, let, let me see things that, that you are passionate about and become passionate about it also. This is, a key, this is a key thing to understand. I really want that. And last week we looked at the tithes, the tenth. And this week I'm going to continue on for a minute in the tithes, but I'm going to take it a step further today because what do we always say? There's three T's in it, in generosity. And what, what do we say? The first one is time, treasure, talent. Look at your neighbor and say, he said, time, treasure, talent is important. All right, can you remember all that? Now, by the way, look back at that neighbor and tell him, you look great this morning. 
There you go, because you do. Y'all are looking good this morning. Look at your other neighbor and tell them you need this message. It's not because I think that I have something good to say. It's because I'm going to give you word today and everybody needs the word of God. Amen? Come on. Anybody want the word of God in their life? I really think it's going to be beneficial to you today. And I think this is, today I'm going to show you that this is the premise for it. This is where it really begins. It really does begin right here. And today we're continuing on in life on mission. And that is our fourth point in our vision statement. That, we, that we've changed and we've gone through that process and this year we'll really be rolling that out. Man, let me, let me tell you something. The first thing you need to know, if you're here this morning, I, I want to clarify something with you. If you're new to church and you're like, look, man, you're talking about giving, I, I'm new to all this stuff, I don't, listen, I believe God's going to work on that. I, I believe if you'll just be obedient to the word, just do it. You know, one of the, one of the worst words, I talked about this in my class this week in, in Elements and in Tuesday night. Uh, logos class one of the worst words is and, and we don't think about this because because we're always trying to find it this is the new thing especially over the past 20 30 years it's like you have to know this before you do anything and it's crept into the church y'all know what word it is it's a three-letter word not a four-letter word it's a three-letter dirty word take a wild guess anybody throw it at me Jesus, well, uh, I don't think it's a dirty word, but look, <laughs> but that's not, it's a good word. W one of the worst words, someone just said it over here, W-H-Y. I know, I, I know, I said that right there. We are so conditioned that I need to know why before I do anything that when I say it's one of the worst words that, that there is when it comes to our relationship with God. It is important to understand your why, but let me tell you something. Sometimes we get to the point where we're constantly going, God gives us a command, and we say, why? Why? This morning I'm going to show you some why, but I want to tell you something. Obedience, giving and sacrificial giving, whether it's your time, your treasure, or your talent, it's not about sacrifice. I'm going to show you today it's about obedience. It's about obedience. And this is where our heart comes into play. Last week I showed you 500 years before the law, right? When Abraham goes to Melchizedek. And I told you that I'm going to show you 2,500 years before the law. Y'all believe I can do that? It's not me doing it, it's the Word doing it. But I believe, I believe I'm going to show you that this morning. So hang with me for just a minute. I got 38 minutes. Man, we better get after it. Better get after 48 minutes. What is it? 48 minutes to play lifetime. Remember, do your best. Don't sweat the rest. Let win and take care of itself. Boy, isn't it funny how things that you chant, things that you speak are important? So I'm going to do that with you today. Real quick, say this with me. The principle of first must be practiced. And I'll say that again one more time without me telling you. The principle must be practiced. I'm telling you, if you don't understand the principle of the first this morning, then we don't understand our walk with God. God is not a hard God. He is a just God. He is clear on his commands. He has given us a book full of his commands. He's given us all the answers to our salvation right there in 66 books of the Bible. And this morning, I want to get into it. Listen, 2 Timothy 1, 7 reads like this. It says, for the spirit, gave, uh, the spirit God gave us does not make us timid. What spirit did God give us? The gift of God, the gift of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost, it doesn't make us timid. Now, I, I know, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a comment. The nominal people come into spirit-filled churches sometimes, and they think that we come across kind of flashy and dashy and charismatic. And the Lord knows 1990s TV evangelists really did it for us. Amen? There was like a little bit too much. <laughs> Doesn't he fall out? Don't you see? <laughs> Let me wave my coat over everybody. 
You know what? I, I, I'm joking about it, but I, I'm, I'm not going to. I, I shouldn't mock those people because there really were some people being healed in some of those revivals. And what a lot of people who are not full of the Holy Ghost, ooh, Jesus' name, Jesus' name. A lot of people who are not full of the Holy Ghost don't understand. It's not arrogance. It's faith. Because I know the power of the Holy Ghost that's in me. And I'm not timid. I'm going to be zealous about it. And I'm going to step out and do what God has called me to do. So this morning, I want to tell you something. It's important that you know Jesus. That's where it starts. That's why I said if you're new here, listen, let me tell you, the first thing you need to do is get a hold of Jesus. You need to be full of the same spirit that was in him. The Bible says that that same spirit that raised him, him from the dead is going to raise you from the dead when he returns. You need, you need that in your life. The second thing we talk about is finding community. You can't do life without others. I am a reclusive human. When I make that statement in the back of my mind, it goes, I can. <laughs> yeah, I'm an only child. Anybody, any other only children in the room? Praise God, those are the special people. We think we are, don't we? One of those guys just raised hands his first Sunday. I love seeing new people leading worship on Sundays. Me and Jeremy, welcome to the worship team. I know, he's probably like, dude, back off me there, back off me. But man, uh, we, we, like, like we, we, we really feel that way. But the fact of the matter is we need people. One thing as an only child I have found is that, that, that I, I didn't want to have an only child. And my parents, it wasn't their goal either. It's just what God, God planned for their life. But the fact of the matter is, is, man, being an only child, I want a bunch of kids. Like, I got four kids, and I'm still some, and we ain't got the money. Anybody, y'all know what I'm talking about right there? Like, we ain't got the money. Like, we, we waited until we, I hear people talk, say that, we waited until we had enough money to ha have more kids. That's great for you. Like one preacher said one time, I don't have a lot of kids because I love kids. Praise Jesus. I'm not going to finish it. But the fact of the matter is, I'm still to this day like, come on, man, we can get that boy. I mean, you know, it'd just be one more, like, just one more. <clears throat> Only child, man. I, I, won't, I won't just, yeah. The Bible says blessed is a man whose quiver is full. Talking about, talking about children, his offspring. I, I, I'm trying to, I'm trying to, I want to be able to, yeah, shoot some arrows at this world, amen. Let me tell you something. It's important to have relationships and a familial relationship. In the church, it is familial. It is. It really is. That's why people, I think, get hurt more at church than they do out in the rest of the world. Other places in the world don't treat me this way. Let me ask you a question. How do people in your family who know you very well treat you? You know, parents of family will tell you how it is. Y'all got some siblings? They'll look right at you and go, you look horrible in that. <laughs> See, I didn't have that growing up. My mama dressed me. There's some pictures out there that I don't want out there. <laughs> Baby, that would look really good if you just rolled your sleeves up with it. But Roll that suit coat up. There you go. Get that haircut just like Don, uh, what was his name? Miami Vice. Look at you. You look so handsome. And baby, you're not that. You're husky. See, a sibling looks at you and says, no, you're fat. Still working on that. But anyways. Second, the third thing is this, is, is, is getting equipped. You need to be equipped. These are equipping messages. Today is not a message that everybody's going to jump in. In the old Pentecostal churches, people used to run the aisles. Anybody ever, ever seen a person run the aisles? Wave at me real quick. You see some, boy, that, I'm talking about got to hold it. Jesus for a minute. Just, ooh. And they're like, well, Paul said he ran a good race. I don't think that's what he was talking about, but hey, that's all right. You do you, boo. Right? I'm talking about get excited, but this is not, I know this is not one of those messages, this is not one of those series that's going to get you pumped up, but it is one that if we'll, if we'll be obedient to it, it will change your life. 
And the last thing is this, is, is live on mission. That's, a, that's our fourth point in our vision. And what does that mean? That means my life, dream team and beyond, is where we talk about that. It's not just about serving on Sunday. It's about having a servant's heart on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday too. I'm going to have a servant's heart. Listen, you, you, you can't just be the church on Sunday when you come to church, but you've got to be the church. We've got to be the church. God is really, like, this is something that, that we really got to get a hold of. So this morning, I want to tell you, the spirit that you've been given is not a spirit of timidity, but it gives us power. Everybody say power, love, and self-discipline. Now, in the King James, it's sound-mindedness. Sound mind. Really, so when you think about that for a minute, when you look at the key, it says sound. What is sound mind? It means that I'm self-disciplined. My feelings don't control my actions. No, I'm going to have a sound mind, and I'm going to choose to do things God's way. It's a choice. And this morning, I, 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 th- I really think it's important that we get a hold of the principle of first. So everybody say it with me, first. First, Exodus 13, 1 through 2 says this, says, Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Consecrate to me all the firstborn, whatever opens the womb among the children of Israel, both of man and beast. He, what does he say right there? Everybody say it. Now I want you all to shout it. It is mine. God said it is mine. The firstborn, it is mine. Now, this is, this is, a, a, key, this is a, a key understanding of the principle of first. God does not know how to be anything but first. Exodus 13, 12 through 13, says this, says, and it shall be, same chapter, says, and it shall be when the Lord brings you into the land of the Canaanites, as he swore to you, and your fathers, and gives it to you, he says, that you shall set apart the Lord and all the open, uh, all that open the womb, that is, every firstborn that comes from an animal which you have. He says, the males shall be the Lord's. The males shall be the Lord's. He says, but every firstborn of a donkey, now we're going to come back and we're going to talk about this for just, in just a second, you shall redeem with a lamb. He said, if you will not redeem it, then you shall break its neck. But Chris, you said he wasn't a harsh God. He's not. This is, there, there's, there's, I know some may say this is under the law. This is, we need to understand the principles behind those laws. Now this is, when this is being written, this is under law. I'm going to show you in just a minute that, this, that, that the concept of the first way predates the law. But this is something brought into the law also. So he says, you should break its neck. If, if, you, if you're not going to redeem a thing that is unclean, you need to break its neck. He says, in all the firstborn of man among your sons, you shall, everybody say, shall redeem. Now, what, what was the thing about the donkey? Scripturally, the donkey represents things that are unclean. Some people just had a thought. We're not bringing politics into church, okay? But anyways. <laughs> Scripture, I'm joking. You, yeah, you be whatever you are. As long as you're Christian, we're good to go, amen? But I want to be kingdom first. We'll, we'll get into that next year. Listen to me for a second. The lamb is clean. It's considered a clean animal. By the way, when I was in Israel... They, they offered lamb everywhere. Now, getting lamb here is kind of tough to do. I ate lamb almost every day. Like, I tore up. I love some lamb. Anybody else, wave at me if you like a good lamb, some good lamb. It's some good stuff, man. If some of y'all are like, Ooh, it's just too gamey for me. You grow some hair on your chest. But anyways, no. I, the, the lamb is a clean animal. So donkey is unclean, and the lamb is clean. Now, did your children, now that this is getting into clean and unclean, 
Anybody here, tell me, so what does that mean? It, it means it's, in humanity, there's born into sin, there's born perfect, and, and we're going we're to look at that for a second. Here's a question I want to ask you real quick. Did your children have to be taught to be bad? Children have to be taught those things. No, not always. They can be, a kid will look at you and go, I can be bad all by myself. Kids can be bad. They know what they're doing. Here's a question for you. Were you born clean or unclean? You're born unclean. Why? Because we were born into sin. So that puts us in the category of donkey. Somebody, uh, there was a word up here said a while ago, and, and you know what I mean. <laughs> All of us. Was Jesus born clean or unclean? He was born clean. Well, Chris, I, what do you mean? Let, let me understand the blood that was shed for you on Calvary's cross. If you understand anything about biology, wave at me if anybody's biology majors, nurses, or medical doctors. Wave at me. What, put it up high. I want to see y'all, man. Good, I'm calling y'all when something goes wrong. Amen. Dr. Barry said, no, he really will. He'll call y'all all the time. No. <laughs> Listen to me for a second. Where does the blood come from? The Father. Blood comes from the Father. Who is Jesus? Literally Jesus. Who is his Father? Spirit of God. God is literally. He is the only man born. You could argue that Adam, he was created, but when it comes to begotten, born from a woman, he's the only man that's ever been born perfect. Man is born in sin, unclean. Jesus is born perfect, clean. Listen, the clean has to be sacrificed so the unclean could be redeemed. Come on, that's a good point right there. Come on, that's, that's, that's good stuff. Now you can learn a lot about this. The book that, that, that I'm getting a lot of this, this message from, some of it today is not from the book though, but, but a lot of this is coming from a book called The Blessed Life by Robert Morris. We actually bought 15 more copies to sell at cost to you. If you want to read where a lot of this is coming from, get that book. Contact someone over, over in, the, in, the, in the, well, still kind of a cafe right now area and grab you one of those books. Listen to me for just a second. This is a concept you've got to get a hold of. The firstborn must be sacrificed or redeemed. You know what? I, 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 don't, I don't know about you guys, but I don't want to sacrifice my firstborn. That would be Eden. It got quiet in here. Is he saying we got to sacrifice our four firstborn kid? This church asks a little much. No. But they have to be redeemed. Big understanding. Next thing is this the first fruits must be offered. Must be offered. I'm going to get into this for just a second. See, the fact of the matter is, God gave us his first fruit. I'm going to make some statements this morning that's going to make you go, whoa. God gave us his first fruit. And the fact of the matter is, the tithing that we talk about giving, that is about provision and protection. Is my money redeemed? Now, I know, man, this is Christmas season. I want to hear something a little nicer than this. Listen, in Christmas season, we need to understand it's not about us. Is my money redeemed? Next week, I'm going to talk about breaking the spirit of mammon. Next week's the giving week, and I'm going to, I'm going to drop this one on you. I was going to talk about the, the principle of multiplication, but I'm going to wait. I think next year, I'm going to bring in a little bit more teaching on this, but it's going to be more about over and above giving and seed offering. But, the, but and, and this is something, I, I don't teach about the tithing, but about every four years or so, we don't, we don't really dig into this very often, because uh, to be honest with you, I, I know it's a tough subject to teach, but the, but the fact of the matter is, is that your money is going to have a spirit on it. What spirit is on your money? Is your money clean, or is it unclean? 
Now, we're going to dig into that a little bit more next week. Malachi shows us that if we open our storehouses, what did we look at last week? God will bless us and rebuke the devoured for whose sake? For your sake. When I do things God's way, how many of you guys are into investments? Wave at me real quick. If it's okay. I'm not going to pick on you if you invest. You, you probably should. It's a smart move to invest, okay? Um, some, some people invest wisely. Some people don't. If you guys don't know anything about the FTX trading and what happened a, a few weeks ago, it is interesting. I mean, billions of dollars, just, just, just thin air, just poof. Like gone. I mean, there's a lot of mad people right now. Amen. There's a lot. Of, when we start seeing the the dollar weakening and inflation taking place, which they said for a long time, there's no inflation. There's no inflation. And then all of a sudden, it changed to inflation is good. So you're saying there is inflation. I mean, it starts making people nervous, especially when you're retiring. Come on, anybody? Any retiring age people in here? quietest group. Nobody wants to admit it. I mean, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That, that not excited about this subject. What we invest in is important. Here's something, I, here's something I've always been taught. Investing in the, is, in the kingdom of God is a win-win situation. It's never the wrong way to go. I'm going to show you why in just a second. Listen to me for a second. The tithe must be first. This is, look at your neighbor and say, the tithe must be first. This is something that must be first. Listen, what, Chris, man, you're getting, getting on my toes a little bit this morning. Listen, I'm not trying to. I'm just trying to show you something. But today I want you to say this with me. Time, treasure, talent. What is today? Sunday. What, what, what on your calendar? Where's Sunday at? First day of the week. You know why we don't do church on the Sabbath? It's supposed to be a day of rest. You know why we do a church on do church on Sunday? Because we're giving him our first fruit. Well, I don't think church attendance is important. I'm, I'm going to hit this for a second. I've always been taught in that time frame. You can do other stuff on Sunday if you need to, but in that time frame, Amen. Come on, in that time frame of church. Guess who that time needs to belong to? Now, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not being mean-spirited by any means when I say that. I'm just trying to get something across. And I understand there's some people got to work sometimes. Things come up on Sundays. I get it. Listen, my goodness, when you go on vacation, enjoy your Sunday. All right, that happens. You know who the last people that go to church, the last people to go to church on Sunday are while they're on vacation? Preachers. They're the last people to go to church. Preachers' wives especially. There you go. My mom just said that. And we going to church this morning? Look, my God, I thought we were having a vacation. But the fact of the matter is, we shouldn't take a vacation from Jesus. I understand vacations, but I, I want to get something across to you this morning. That time slot is an important time because what you're telling God is, God, this first day of the week, and you're teaching your kids something. How many of you realize that your kids will always do just a little bit less than you'll do? And we wonder why, come on, oh, I'm not picking on anyone in this room today. This is already planned to be preached about. This is all, these are in old notes right here that I brought up from five years ago. It's important. That's, these are important things. Listen to me for just a second. Genesis 4, 3 through 5. Now here's 25. Everybody look at your neighbor and say 2,500. 2,500 years before the law. And in the process of time it came to pass. This is after Adam and Eve leave the garden, they're put out of the garden of Eden. In the process of time it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Abel, now notice it said he brought an offering. Look at your neighbor and say he just brought an offering. Okay. Abel also brought of the Say it. Abel also brought of the 
of his flock and of their fat. The implication right here is that Cain did not bring his first. Or it would have said he brought the first to the ground. Instead, Cain just threw some... I'll just throw some stuff in there. There you go, God. But Abel understood something in order for his parents' nakedness to be covered. Blood had to be shed. They tried covering it up with some fig leaves. They withered away. I can imagine after this point, Adam was sitting there going, it's about one more day and it's going to, there we go. Amen. That was a bad joke, but anyways, I'm going to move on. <laughs> but blood had to be shed. In order, so see, this was understood. So Abel also brought of the firstborn of his flock and of their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering, but he did not respect Cain in his offering. And Cain was very angry and his countenance fell. Here it is. This is the, there's two hearts we're going to talk about today. The first is the heart of Cain and the second is the heart of Abel. When it comes to first, we can have the right heart or we can have the wrong heart. I don't know about you, but I want to have the right heart. Anybody else in the room say, I want to have the right heart, Chris? I want to have the right heart. Key point right here. Genesis 4, 6-7, speaking of the heart of Cain, says, so the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? I got a question. Any of y'all that had siblings, you ever, they ever do something to you and then you're mad and then they look at you and go, why are you mad, bro? I can imagine Abel walking by. God has received Abel's offering. He is he, he respected it. He was appreciative of it. And then there's Cain over there. And then Abel walked by and goes, what's the matter, man? The anger that kindled in him, we know what ended up happening. He said, why are you angry? And why has your countenance fallen? He said, if you do well, will you not be accepted? The implication there is you have not done well. You have not done well. He's, 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 but basically, it's kind of one of those deals. It's like God's looking at him and saying, hey, bud, it's simple. If you do things my way, I accept it. Like, it's not like God had to think about this. And I, I like what one, one pastor said here recently. I was listening to a preach. He said, you know, nothing has ever occurred to God. He's all-knowing. The Word tells us that. Like, nothing, he's never been sitting there one day and went, oh, Gabriel, Michael, come in here. And they come running in or flying in. And he's like, I just thought of something. Like, you know how, like, we have epiphanies? He's never had an epiphany. He knows. And guess what? He only knows and can do truth. God cannot lie. God cannot step outside of his, he can only be his own character. He can't act like someone else. God will never deceive you. Come on. Hang with me for a minute. He says, if you do well, will you not be accepted? And if you do not do well, sin lies at the door and its desire is for you. Why did I open with that first scripture um, just to say to the New Testament, here's what he says, but you should rule over it. In other words, it is your decision to have the self-discipline to do things the way I've shown you to do it. This is, this, is, this, is, this is kind of some teaching that's tough, but the fact of the matter is, the heart of Cain, I'm going to get to it in just a second. Jude 11 tells us this, or 1 and 11, uh, well, it's just one chapter in Jude. It says, woe to them, for they have gone the way of who? Cain, and have run greedily in error of Balaam for what? Profit, and perished in the rebellion 
of Korah. If you understand the rebellion of Korah, God opened up the ground and, follow, and swallowed people, his, his whole family. Why? Because he stood against God. Well, no, Chris, he stood against Abraham. He could, the Bible says, touch not the head of an anointed. God had anointed Abraham as leadership, and when he gave him, when he gave him, when he gave him script, biblical, what became biblical, but from God commands, and they went against it, they were going against God. So when this word, come on, how many have you ever been, maybe you've said it, maybe you've been around someone who said it, they read the word, and then after a minute, they read it, and they just go, well, I just don't know if I believe that. You show something in the Word of God and they go, well, I, I don't know if I believe that. Come on, now I don't want you to raise your hand, but have you ever thought that before? I, I'm, I'm thankful for, for a dad who raised me to say, son, if it's in the Word, it's settled. Come on, it's settled. Let the word of God be true. Key, key right here. But what did Cain do? Cain said, no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do, see, some people don't give because they don't realize it's biblical. And today, if you've never heard of this stuff, just listen to it. Open your heart this morning. Jesus, I want you to just ask God, God, open my heart. Come on. I want to be thick-skinned and soft-hearted. Too many people are soft-skinned and hard-hearted. What does that mean? It means that they get easily offended. And then they get angry. It reminds me of 1990s and early 2000s punk rock. Y'all know what I'm talking about? You got a guy with his hair swept across, and he's like, nee, 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 nee. I got so much rage inside of me. <laughs> what are you going to do with that rage, bro? <laughs> that was kind of mean. I know, but yeah, there's somebody in here that's like, but I liked Green Day. I did too. <laughs> But like real talk, I look back and it's like, I have so much rage. Mm. That's called, that's called, that's called having, having soft skin, hard heart. Soft heart, thick skin, what it be? I can handle it. I'm not easily offended. Because see, what happens is usually a lot of people do not tithe and they don't put God first in their life because of greed and rebellion. In other words, they say, you can read a scripture and they say, no, you know what? I, I don't know if I accept that. I don't know. I just don't think God, I'm going to get hit this in my clothes today. And this is, these are notes from forever ago. And, and listen to me for a minute. I just don't think God's that way. But his word said it. When you say that I don't agree with the word of God, that I have another relationship, what you're saying is God is not God. I am God. Cain's heart said, I'll bring what I want when I want because I am the all-ending authority in my life. You are not God. Come on, come on. That, that's like, I know that's pretty heavy, but that's the heart of Cain. It says that it's my decision. See, this is all about heart. This isn't about money. This is about heart. It's my decision, God God, I know what your word said, but I just don't think you're that way. Isn't it funny? I wonder how many times people have said, God, I just don't, fi I just don't find you to be that way. And he's looking at you going, I cannot be separated from my word, though. Well, I told you that in my word. Read your word, and you would know that. Now, I'm, not, I'm not being cocky this morning. I talked about not being timid. I'm, this morning, I'm, I'm just literally, this is one of those deals where I feel like I'm on the plank, and when you talk about money with people, it's just like, oh, dear Jesus, here we go. <laughs> I don't mean to come across cocky or anything this morning. I'm just trying to tell you something. That when the Word of God says it, let it be. It is so. I mean, come on, is there anybody here? It's like, it just is. I'm not going to fret about it. I'm going to let it be. If we say that God has showed you something that doesn't, if you say, God, God you know what? I believe God has shown me something. It doesn't, it's not necessarily scriptural, but it's just God impressed it on my heart. Let me tell you something. If God has impressed something, if you believe God has impressed something on your heart that is not biblical, that wasn't God. Be careful with that. 
Be careful with that. Cain was mad. Everybody say, mad. Cain was mad because Abel's sacrifice was accepted and his was not. In other words, he was angry at God. And basically, he killed. What did he do? He got so angry, he killed Abel because of it. Let me tell you something. Jealousy, jealousy is an ugly thing. And I've noticed people who understand the things of God just said, you know what, God, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to do things your way, and I'm going to let you take care of it. I'm not, I've found that they are the kind of people who are not jealous when someone else is blessed. That's the truth. There's a lot of jealousy. I've, all, I've said this so many times. CeeLo Green, wave at me if y'all know who CeeLo Green is. What a prophet. Amen. My God. CeeLo Green, he actually had a line in a song. He says, a rich man will have a dollar while all the poor man will have his greed. Because the poor man looks at the dollar and says, I want his. I want what he has. Now, I'm going to get into that for a second. Proverbs 19.3 says, the foolishness of man twists his way and his heart frets against the Lord. See, this is exactly what Cain was doing. He twisted his own way, and his heart was fretting. He was angry at God, really. It wasn't that he was angry at Abel. He's angry at God. Proverbs 3, 9 through 10 says, Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruit of all your increase, so your barns will be filled with plenty, and your vats will overflow with new wine. Exodus 23, 19 says, The first of the first fruits of your land you shall bring into the house of the Lord your God. You shall not boil a young goat in his mother's milk. These are some, some laws during those times. But listen to me for just a second. Do you notice first, first, look at your neighbor and say first. First is constantly retur- referred to in Scripture. And Cain did not follow this process. See, we, have to, we have to assume scripturally that it was understood that Abel did the right thing and did what God had, had asked of them. And Cain decided, no, I'll do it my way. And then, so that's the, the heart of Cain. I'll, I'll give what I want when I want. And then there's the heart of Abel. Hebrews 11, 4 says, by faith, everybody say, come on, say that when by what? By faith. Abel offered to God a more ex- excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gift. Who, whose, witness did he, who, whose witness did he gain? God's. God testifying of his gifts, and through it, he being dead, still speaks. Thousands of years later. Today, we're talking about the heart of Abel. I don't know about you, but like, I, I won't, I would like for, you. you know, we talk, like, think about the, well, man, Cain killed him, that's so sad. Cain goes down in history as cursed. Abel goes down as history, in history as a man who the word says God testifies of him. Now, I don't know about you, but I realize something. There's a lot more to life than what I'm living in the physical. There's a whole lot more to life than my experience here and now. I can live my life for 70 years or I can live my life for eternity. Pro tip, live life for eternity. Come on, anybody, come on, just make the decision. I'm going to live it for eternity. Here's why, because when you live it for eternity, you go down like Abel where God testifies of what you've done. Abel was a man of faith. Even in his death, his faith still speaks. Genesis 22 and 10 through 14, and this is where I'm going to go as I begin kind of um, narrowing down to the end this morning. Where does it start? Like This is, this is 25 year, 2,500 years before the law is written, but I want, to, I want to move back over into Abraham for a minute. I get ready to close this morning. Abraham did something. I mean, could you imagine? You've been promised the son, and in your old age, 
God gives them to you. My dad, y'all have heard some of y'all, if you're new here, you hadn't heard me tell you. My dad, I think he said, did you say that one of the first messages he ever preached was at a nursing home? And the title of it was, Hang on, Sarah had a baby at 90. I like it. All them ladies in there were like. <laughs> I, think, I think what he was talking about was promise. Hang on. Is what he was talking about. I don't care how old you are. God, God, God can move in your life. That's what he was talking about. But I like that. Hang on, Sarah. I've had a baby. And I, I tell you what, if the nursing home started bearing fruit, we'd, we'd be. <laughs> Woo, look at the miracle in Waco, Texas. <laughs> Sketch. But I want you to imagine God has made your wife new and, 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 and she's, man, she's at 90 years old and all of a sudden she's looking, she, the Bible says that God made her like new, like she was a young woman again. I mean, you know, a hundred year old man's like, <laughs> you're a good God. <laughs> oh, I'm getting fired after this. And so then, so you're raising your son, and, and then one day God says, here's what I want you to do. Now, I think this is interesting. We talked about this while we were in Israel on this, this last trip. The area where Abraham takes Isaac to be sacrificed, it was common for those people to give their first child to their gods. They would sacrifice their children. Now, I, I, I'm going to make a statement right here. America has been, since the 1960s, has been sacrificing firstborns a lot. Chris, that's not fair. I, listen, it's just. What, what are they sacrificing to? Hedonism. I'll live any way I want to live. Listen, and if you've done that, listen. No one's throwing a rock at you. Today's a new day. I've said this before. Today's a new day. No one's throwing rocks at you. Who you? What you did is not who you are today. Amen. Come on, I want to get that across. Many people didn't know. They didn't know. They didn't think about it. But really, so many people have sacrificed their firstborn in the name of what? I will, I will have relations, intimate relations with whoever I want to have relations with. I'll do what I want when I want. Cain. I don't care what you said, God. I'll do what I want to do. And so it's similar to the kind of times that Abraham was in when God calls him and says, I want you, just like I'm calling you today, hey, God wants your kids. He wants your children. Mom, Dad, are you giving them to him? Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. This is a question for you. Are you giving them to him? Is, are your kids in Sunday school right now? Are they? We, we got some exciting things over the next year coming up for Sunday school. We're about to revamp the whole thing. I'm not going to get into today. We, we started something new, and we're, we're just, we've learned some new things. I'm excited about it. I believe this church is not playing, and our leadership, our youth leadership, our kids' leadership, they're not playing. We want to equip your kids for this world because this is a loss generation and I believe that God looks at him and says I don't care what you say about Gen Z they're still mine even if you're not giving them to me they're mine so God God tells him, I want you to take him up I want you to build an altar I mean can you imagine God but you gave him to me What kind of God would ask that of you? And Abraham stretched out his hand. He took the knife to slay his son. Abraham was willing. You know what? If they'll do it for their gods, oh, come on, man. These people give their money to everything in this world, but when it comes down to it, are oh, we giving it? People give their time to everything in this world, but when it comes, people give their talent to everything in this world, but when it comes down to it, the question this morning is, does God have your first and your best? 
This morning I told our worship team, I said, this morning, don't give off the back end of what you got left. Today's Sunday, it's not Saturday. Today you're giving the front end of your energy. You're giving the best you got. And by the way, worship was phenomenal this morning. Come on, I, I love good worship. So here he is. Knife in the air. And the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham, stop. Here I am. Now, I love this passage. I'm, I get emotional. You might not get emotional, but I get emotional about this because I know what's happening right here. I know what's happening right here. My wife always says, heaven is not, it, it's, you know, people don't go to heaven. She, she said it so well. It's pretty simple. Heaven is a place for, for people that want to do things God's way and love him. They love him and they love his ways. Heaven would not be heaven if a bunch of rebellious people were in it. Well, I don't think it's fair that people, you know, some people just, but some people got ugly attitudes. Some people, we want to cast the spirit out of some people, but they don't have a spirit. It's just their human spirit, and they like it. Anyways, 50 of y'all be back next week. We'll see y'all then. Anyway, <laughs> do not lay your hand on the lad. Listen to this. Or do anything to him. For now, I know that you fear. What was this really about? Now, what do we say? Tithing is a four-letter word. It's a test. God is getting ready to give everything. In the last couple weeks, it's been in the media. It's been attacks on Jewish people. Intellectually. Saying, well, they just run everything. Whether good or bad, the fact of the matter is, is God said he'd bless him. What did he say? Well, come on. What did he, what did he do with Ishmael? He said that he would even be blessed. And look at him. My Lord. I, we were in France, and we were at one place there. And y- Y'all ever been somewhere before, and y- it dawned on you, I don't belong here? <laughs> we were in Monte Carlo, where the 007, yes, I did. I went to the casino, because I had to see the casino that all the 007 movies were in. Y'all know what I'm talking about? I was like... Money, but anyways, <laughs> for a minute there, I was like, Da-da-da-da. anyway, I, I mean, I, I love those shows. That's bad, I know. And we're there, and we decide to eat next to the the harbor there, where all the sh- the, the boats are in. Y'all, y'all know, like, you go to you go to Lake Waco, and you see like a nice bass boat, and you go, boy, that sure would be nice. Boy, it costs a pretty penny right there, right? No, it's ain't bass boats. This is yachts, man. I've never, I've never, I, I, maybe you guys have, I've never seen these 150 foot yachts. They're like ships. And did you know that you can look up the names of the yachts and you can find, my brother-in-law pulled it up, Jared, and he's like, he's like look, uh, that yacht is owned by this multi-billionaire CEO. And we start pulling up these, uh, this guy, uh, the guy, this guy's from uh, UAE, he's a, he's a sheik. Start realizing a lot of these guys are Arabs, sheiks, and they're completely blessed. Why? Because God said it. But, but I, I don't think it's fair. God said it. I love it when my kids say, Dad, that's not. And guess what I say back? Life ain't. And guess what Emma says back? Ain't isn't a word. I say, look at Webster's Dictionary. They put it in there. (laughs) In the South, it is. I'm taking a minute this morning. Hang on. We're we're still good on time. What does he do? You know, people are going on about it. These people are blessed. Yeah, because God said, I'm going to bless your offspring. He told Abraham. But before he gets this point, what, what happens right here? He says, do not let your hand on the lad and do not do anything to it. For I know that you fear God since you have not withheld your son, your only son. See, God already knew right there. He said, I want to say, are you willing to give me what I'm willing to give you? Because I'm going to give you all 
redemption. I'm even going to give redemption to the Gentile. I'm going to give redemption to the Jew. Come on, man. That is exciting news. Listen to this for a second. What is he doing right here? He's looking, he's seeing. Look, you know, I want you to think about that for a minute. And then God may appear at that very moment of ram. No, God had it prepared. It was going on. That ram was already in the thicket. I just want to see, Abraham, are you willing to give to me your very best and your first? This morning, one of the lines in the song says, my eyes, what would the line say in the song? My eyes are on you. Or, and I, I, told, I leaned over my wife. I said, see, that's what I want. I want the eyes. I want God's eyes. I don't just want his hand. I want his eyes. I want his face. I want him. When I speak, I want his attention. Anybody here ever had a kid... And, and when they're talking and you're not listening, they grab your face and turn your face to them. Because they know, they know. Mom has, mom and dad, they have this mechanism. And they just go. <laughs> but if I get them to look at me, Macy will come up and go, Dad, Dad! And then tell me what she wants to tell me. Now, it annoys me a little bit, but then in another way I think about it sometimes, why, aren't, why, why am I not like that with God? God, hey, God, I don't just want your blessings, I want your attention. And see, when you're willing to say, God, I'll give you my first and I'll give you my very best, it gets the attention of God. He starts paying attention to your prayers. Musicians, as you come back this morning, Listen to me for just a second. Matthew 6 and 33, it says, but seek first. Seek when? It's sometimes, no, seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. Therefore, do not worry. See, so many of us, we don't want to, we don't want to give of our time. We don't want to give of our treasure. We don't give of our talent because we're so worried of what it means for the future. Let me tell you something. Don't worry about the future. What does this say? It says sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Reading back, he says, therefore, do not worry about tomorrow for tomorrow will worry about its own things. Now listen, preparation is good, but don't trust in your preparation. You got to trust in God. Come on, you know, catch what I'm saying this morning. I got to trust in you, God. I trust it to be done right. The scripture says that Cain was offended by God, which is interesting because it makes me think about this, the question people ask, how can a loving God send anyone to hell? If he's so loving, how could he send? Let me tell you something, God don't send people to hell. People send people to hell. Chris, that's strong teaching. There's not enough of it today. I can't. I, you know how when you're younger and your parents do something, you're like, I don't, I just don't know if I do that that way, Dad. I'm not going to lie. I'm, I, can, I, can I confess this morning? Growing up, you hear, when you're a pastor's kid, you hear your dad preach something, you go, ooh, you didn't have to do it like that, man. And then I find myself 20 years later, and I go, oh, He, he, did, he was right. And I understand it. It's, it's the word of God. It's not his opinion. I can't give you my opinion this morning. I'm trying to tell you something. The real question that you should be asking is this. How could anyone reject a loving God? Well, I don't know that. Listen, he is a loving God. He is a loving God. He's given us word to lead us and guide us. 1 Corinthians 15 20 says, but now Christ is risen from the dead and has become the what? Now if you want to talk theology about this, I can do it later if you'd like to. This is a statement. What do you say? The first fruit of those who have fallen he was the first one to rise from the dead. You and I, we're going to rise from the dead. But even furthermore, what if I told you this morning that Jesus is God's first fruit to you and I? Jesus 
is God's tithes to you and me. See, God knew when he told Abraham, take Isaac up to the mountain. He knew one day, Abraham, Man, I, I don't know if you get it. Like, I, man, my God. One day, Abraham, I'm going to give my own flesh and blood, my first fruit, my only boy. I'm going to give him so that this whole world, why? Because I love the world, that I'm going to give my only begotten son. And if you'll believe in him, you should not perish. Come on, believe as the scripture has said. You shall not perish, but you shall have everlasting, eternal. You should have eternal life. See, Abraham. See, you don't realize this. Well, that's Abraham. That's Old Testament. It's because of Abraham that now the promise is to us. We are now seeds of Abraham. Come on, man. We are now seeds of Abraham. It is our adopted. When you look back, it's my granddad, man. My adopted granddad, Abraham. Because he was willing to say, God, I will give you my very first. I don't know what you're, I don't know what you're gonna do. I just trust you. Because you have promised it to me. Come on, if you, if you have promises in your life, there's anybody in the room right now, you say, Chris, I got some promise in my life. I haven't received it. I haven't experienced it yet, but there's promise in my life. I want you to stand up on your feet right now. I haven't seen it yet. I haven't seen it come to pass yet, but I trust God is going to do it. Colossians 1.15 says, He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all. Who? Jesus. See, Jesus was in the plan always. Jesus represents God's first fruit. He, He is God's very best. So God's not asking too much when He says, hey, I, I look at it this way. First of all, I don't pay tithes. Stop saying pay tithes. Everybody say give. It's a decision. I give it. I don't pay it. I don't have to give it. It's my choice to give it. Why? Because God says, look, you can do it your way or you can do it my way. It's your choice. You can, you can, go, you can have Cain's heart. Really, at the end of the day, who, whose heart did Abel have? Abel had God's heart. Abel, just like David, was a man, if you think about it, he's a man after God's heart because he said, you know what? I'm willing to give you my very best, God. Come on, I don't know what tomorrow holds, but I know this. You are God. You are a good God. You are a loving God. You will never leave me. You will never forsake me. You will be with me always. And God, if I do it your way, I will be with you for eternity. And it's worth it all. I don't give God 10%. He gives me 90% of what is already His. Yeah. That's the mindset. And it shall come to pass, Exodus 13, 14 through 16. And it shall come to pass when your sons ask you in time to come, say, what is this? This giving of the first fruit. That you shall say to Him, by strength of the hand of the Lord brought us out of Egypt out of his house of bondage. It came to pass when the Pharaoh was stubborn about letting us go and the Lord killed all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both, both the firstborn of man and the firstborn of beast. Therefore I sacrifice to the Lord all the males that open the womb, but the firstborn of my sons I redeem. He killed all the firstborn of Egypt except for those woo, who had the blood of the sacrificed lamb on their doorpost. Redemption. Redemption. And he says, it shall be a sign on your what? Hand and as frontlets between your eyes. For by the strength of the hand of the Lord brought us out of Egypt. Say it with me one more time. Time. Treasure. Talent. The tithe is the first fruit of treasure. God said it's mine. 
you can decide to do it that way or, or, or you're, listen, you, you're willing, you, you're welcome to come to church here and never give a dime. We're going to preach the word to you. We're going to keep on preaching. But there's a way that's better. Sunday is the first day of the week. It's the first fruit of my time. What if this church said, you know what, we're not going to be like the rest of the world. We're not going to consider 50% attendance faithful. No, if I'm in Waco, Texas, and my job does not have me somewhere else, or I'm not away with my family on vacation, guess where I'm at? I'm not going to plan anything in that time slot. Why? Because God, at 10, if it has to go to 12, I don't care. From, from, from 10 in the morning to 12, it's yours. It's all yours. Dream teams, small groups, that's the first fruit of my talent. And here's my question to you this morning. It's from a passage of Scripture again, Deuteronomy 6. Chris, why do you keep using these old, old, old Testament? Let me tell you something. If you don't understand, we are Judeo-Christian. We're not just Christian. The Bible says we are grafted in. We have to understand this passage of Scripture. You ready? Everybody look at your neighbor and say, this is the, the Shema. Look at him, this is the Shema. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord, your God, with all your heart. With all your, this is, God, what's the greatest commandment? Jesus looked back at him and he said, the greatest is that you love the Lord with all your heart, all your soul, and all your strength. He says, in these words, which I command you today, shall be in your heart. Heart. It's a heart issue. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way, when you lie down and when you rise up. You shall bind them what did he say? Talking about just a minute ago. I just read you that passage of Scripture in Exodus. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand. And you and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house. Come on, the blood applied. The doorposts of your house and on your gates. Mom, Dad, I think it's silly. You know it would be a little smarter if you use that money and you invest it in some other you should invest in stocks. No, you know what? What if we said, no, you know what? I'm going to invest. See, because it's not just about you. When you're investing of your time, your, your treasure, and your talent, you're investing in your children's future, and you're showing them. Look right here, son, daughter for me, it's daughters. Eden, Emma, Elise, Macy, listen to me. First, Everything belongs to Him. This morning as we close our eyes, our altar team comes down real quick. I wonder if there's somebody that says, you know what, Chris, I already, maybe, maybe you already give tithing, you already do that stuff. But maybe you don't. That's between you and God this morning. It's a decision you have to make. No one will ever, I'm not going to go look back at your, we, we don't, I don't look. this morning if there's somebody who says God I, you know what I have not been giving you my best with all eyes closed all over the room this morning I wonder if that person just lift a hand lift your hands up in heaven so maybe there's some areas in my life where I need to give I need to give I got more to give come on that's honesty right there there's so many people being honest this morning so many of you that's so beautiful I, I'm with you I'm raising my hands with you now the rest of us can we lift our hands to heaven and here's what I want you to do. As soon as I'm done praying, come down to this altar space. We're just going to take a few more minutes before we close out of this room this morning. But as our hands are lifted right now, God, we lift our hands and surrender to you. God, there's things I may not understand. And we ask why all the time. But God, today, I just want to lift my hands to you and say, God, I just I want to be obedient to your word. I believe 
You're going to show me some things and I'm going to see some things. God, I pray revelation in people's lives where there needs to be revelation in their lives this morning. God, I pray over every household, over every mom, over every dad, over every child right now, God. We give you ourselves, God. We love you, God, with all of our heart, our souls, and our strength this morning, God. We give our, come on, someone shout that. I give myself to you. Come on, someone shout it now. I give myself to you. God, I belong to you totally and wholly. In the name of Jesus, God, I pray I give myself to you. Come on, if you want to seal that up, let's take about three minutes. Go ahead and step out of your seat this morning. Come and make an altar space where you give yourself. Come on, just like that altar space where the lamb was sacrificed. This morning, give yourself for just a minute in this altar space. Come on, let's make this room holy for a minute. Thank you.